No, that was it. Sure? Yeah. What about that? No, because that's, that brings light like, behind us. That brings light like behind us. Yeah. Whether you're working on your own, Perfect. All right, we awesome. should be live on there. All right, here we go. What's up, guys? My name is Jordan Hall. I'm Scott Peak, and uh, we are getting ready to chase this uh, significant, severe with setup today. Potential for tornado outbreak across northern Alabama and southern Tennessee and parts of northeastern Mississippi. Um, pulled up now. We got the H Triple R. It's one of the newer runs. Um, you can see a lot of isolated supercells firing in this. In environment here in the northern Alabama region, southern Tennessee. Um, is there anything really you wanted to say about it that you've noticed? Yeah, um, just uh, looks like uh, uh, the atmosphere is favoring northeast uh, Mississippi, uh, northwest Alabama. Um, so from Huntsville down to Tupelo and maybe towards Jacksonville, uh, Mississippi. But definitely closer, uh, closer up to those uh, two regions where they touched uh, – uh, Tennessee. So, and it looked like um, we're looking at the computer or computer simulated model. Um, so, this is what the radar might look like in a few hours. Um, and as Jordan runs through it, then you can see there's supercells forming in uh, northeast uh, Mississippi, and then they uh, go off into uh, northwest Alabama, and then eventually Tennessee. And you can also see that line of storms right behind it. So there'll be two rounds today. Some of you might get three rounds of severe weather, depending on where you are, especially in northeast, I'm sorry, northwest Alabama. Um, so, and uh, as we go on, uh, you can probably look at the uh, photographs and uh, this will kind of give you an idea of why we're looking at the potential for tornadoes. Uh, you can see there's a nice little loop um, right there, starting from the center of the line and it does a nice curve in the red. Um, and that's what you want for tornadoes. This one's a little bit more, you got a little more backing winds at the surface, but a little southwesterly there, but your temperature and your dew points are really close together. You got 67 or 71 over 67. Um, so your temperature dew points nice and uh, close together. So that means your cloud bases will be uh, close to the ground, which will make it easier to have tornadoes. So um, and let's find another good one. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull the other good sounding here. There's one sounding we found that was... Oh, Let me go back here a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pull from the supercell in northwest Alabama. There you go. It's a PDS oh, wow. tornado yeah. sounding. Nice loop photograph. Uh, you got a little bit of better backing winds down there at the surface. Uh, over, over 163. Three cape. Usually anything with over 50 is decent. Three, anything three over cape 50 model. is fantastic. Um, your storm relative helicity or SRH is at... Over 200, it's at 326. 200 obviously is a nice number, and we'll roll over that. Um, and our then, mixed layer is 1300. Yeah, mixed layer is over 1000, uh, 1300 there, so it's really good. That's a lot of juice. Very, uh, very, energy. very ripe and juicy environment. Yes. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center right now currently has an enhanced risk over the deep south region and uh, northwestern Alabama, northeastern Mississippi, and across central um, northern Tennessee. I'll kick it over to the tornado. Um, probabilities here you have a 10 percent hatch that hatched area there is uh where you have potential for st uh, stronger tornadoes ef2 or stronger so definitely uh, a day to be weather aware i know it is new year's day so people are still celebrating but we're waking up from the yeah we're just waking Sleeping up in. from celebrating so yeah. um very busy day in the severe weather field um, as we were talking about earlier there is seems to be two separate waves as he had said you got that first line of supercells Looks to be isolated renegade supercells is mowing its way through Alabama and Tennessee, and then on the back end here you got a uh, it's kind of like a it's a big squall line where that's, your cold front the is your cold, cold front, front making its way through. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be more of a straight line wind risk with maybe QL, quasi linear tornadoes, uh, QLCS tornadoes, and your temperatures are going to drop off significantly um, after this makes its way through. So. Um, we'll, you know, what did I add in there? There's QLCS tornadoes embedded in the squall line yep. uh, are a little trickier because those can spin up really fast and then dis uh, dissipate just quickly. Yes. So it's not like your isolated supercells, which you kind of, kind of see coming. 
uh, your QLCS tornadoes or your quasi-linear convective system tornadoes tend to spin up really fast. Uh, they might uh, do some quick damage and then they'll be gone before you know it, before the weather service can get a warning out there. And that's usually the case. Uh, a lot of them can spin up before the weather service can get a warning out there. So just be weather aware of that, especially with those embedded supercells that have rotation in them, um, very difficult. So e treat each warning um, with a, a caution today, especially in that line, um, even if it's severe, doesn't matter what it is, even if it's severe thunderstorm warning, uh, any severe storm can produce tornadoes at any time. So just keep treat those severe warnings as you would those tornado warnings today, just in case, because uh, like I said, those storms could spin up uh, tornadoes quickly in that line, just as yep. easy as with isolated cells can. Um, right here we have a tornado watch that's already been put into effect shortly, not too long ago, across uh, Tennessee and southern Kentucky. This tornado watch is uh, for that squall line, those quasi-linear tornadoes yeah, that are going to happen. Yeah. Um, just brief spin-ups there, but there is a tornado warning, a tornado watch there uh, for that system. So that's something to uh, really pay attention to, uh, especially throughout this afternoon. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see another tornado watch come out for the isolated supercell potential. Uh, right here, I got the uh, live. Yeah, it'll uh, be further south. Uh, the probably issue a tornado watch for uh, northwestern Mississippi, Alabama, Mississippi, and northern Alabama. Um, so. Something you can see here. Let me take a couple of these overlays off for you. Um, take the radar overlay off and the um, SPC graphic. And you kind of see there's a lot of sunlight there, so, especially out ahead of that system. That's that front. You can see there's a lot uh, of a lot of sun. All these uh, dark. A lot of yeah. Yeah, all these dark spots here that you're seeing are is um, sunlight hitting the ground. So you got a lot of blue sky, stuff burning off, which is gonna create a lot more energy in the, it's a lot more heating, lot in, more the heating, for lifts. heating in the atmosphere for lift. So um, it's gonna be a very active day down here in Dixie Alley. So make sure to listen to all your warnings. This is our SREF, kind of pinpointing the tornado risk. And the SREF is a short range uh, model that kind of gives us an idea of where the best tornado potential will be with this model. It's not always accurate, but it gives us a, a decent idea of where things might occur uh, when it comes to uh, tornadoes. Uh, there are other factors that are in play uh, with this model, but uh, especially with isolated supercells, it does a lot better. So, and you can see a 45 or Northwest uh, uh, Alabama, I'm sorry, yes, Alabama, Northwest Alabama, and uh, a little bit into uh, uh, Mississippi there in the 30s. So, um, and of course, the higher the number, the uh, the model predicts a higher chance of tornadoes. Um, so and it's kind of favoring that northwest corner of uh, Alabama there. So um, uh, that's uh, that's something to watch. Yep, so uh, definitely be weather aware today, guys. We'll probably be rolling out here in the next few hours. I know it's only I know it's only 10.08 right now. It's 11.08. Oh, sorry, it's sorry. 11.08. Sorry. Mountain time on my computer. My so so 11.08, but um, in that region, especially where uh, Jordan has uh, – has this right now what we did um, i did yeah i'm just going to point it out yeah, here it's a little easier to look at yeah definitely um you go back to that other map that was yeah you want me to go back yeah, to the actually, satellite yeah, go back to that other map that was even better. there we go um can you zoom in a little bit yep there you go especially in that region where you see those isolated cells forming out ahead of the front i suspect this is just my prediction but uh there might be a higher risk for tornadoes um uh, obviously it's 1109 right now, so SBC, the Storm Prediction Center, will probably come out with a new outlook uh, later uh, at 12 noon, I think. Wouldn't so, be, yeah. Yeah, 12 I, noon. I wouldn't be surprised to see them drop a moderate risk 15% tornado, mm -hmm. uh, especially with these isolated soups that are popping up. Because the model has been very consistent. Consistently. So I could, yeah. right here where this 10 is actually, build another, another moderate risk in there with 15% hatched area. That's a possibility. Now, if they don't, they don't, but yeah, it's yeah, just they because don't, they don't do that doesn't mean that it's any less of a risk. Yeah. So definitely uh, pay attention today and be weather aware. Um, we will be live on severestudio.com most likely today, so be sure to check that out as well. But thank you guys for watching.